So I would like to call uh, today's meeting, December 20th, of the Planning Commission to order. Uh, please stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> So good evening. It looks like we're going to go over something we've done before. We'll do the reports from commissioners and staff first. Uh, commissioners, any reports? No? I do have one. Okay. We met. First time since October 2014. Oh. But we did meet. <laughs> Which uh, you're on the um, Supervisors Planning Committee, correct? I am. Yeah, okay. That's correct. And um, we considered adoption of... Um, a management plan to implement new state standards for chapters 1304 and 1308, the ordinance code. I have the entire uh, agenda packet here. Any of you who might be interested are welcome to have a look. Cool. All right. After the meeting, we will pass that around for the yes, commissioners. Okay. Absolutely. Um, we'll jump back a little bit. Staff, do you have any reports? Good evening. I mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to take a moment to wish you all Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And Thank you, at Quinn. this point, we have no items for the first meeting in January, uh, but do expect to have items for the second meeting in January. Thank you. Um, we will keep you posted on that. So thank you and Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. Mm -hmm. And how about the report from the Agricultural Advisory Committee representative? Uh, no report, no meeting. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, now we'll do the minutes of the meeting of October 4th, 2017, which seems like a long time ago now. It does. Uh, did it, anyone want to make a motion or any corrections? Attendance only has one. <laughs> <laughs> and where is like that on that one? like attendance or something. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, do you want to tell her what page? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Move it to accept with that correction. How's that? Okay. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Abstain. With the yeah, correction of attendance. On, do you know what page? On the front. Right here. Front page. Yeah, All right. Do you see it? I'm not looking at it, Okay. Corrected. Perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, two abstentions. Yes. Aspect, so. so that means we have. You do have. You do have quorum. Oh, I do. But you said two or not. Because Peter. Okay, but we're still yeah. good. There's still four. Okay, yeah. we're still four. All right. I only had to count to four, all right? <laughs> I only had to go to four. <laughs> all right, so now we'll move on to the public comment. Uh, public comment, we can discuss, uh, you can discuss with us anything that's not on the agenda packet. Um, and with that, I will open it up to anyone who wants to talk during public comment. Okay, I will now close public comment and move on to the agenda items. Um, and with that, we'll turn it over to staff, maybe do a presentation. Thank you, commissioners, and thank you, everyone, for being with us this evening. My name is Dan Van Essen, and I'm the lead project planner for Conditional Use Permit 17-005. The applicant is AT&T and Epic Wireless, and the owners are Elizabeth and Bruce Pedrell. Mm -hmm. For the project description, uh, Conditional Use Permit CUP 17-005 to allow the construction of a 110-foot tall stealth wireless telecommunications tower, equipment shelter, and relative equipment within a 45 foot by 40 foot fence compound on assessor parcel number 58-540-004. The project site is on a 45.34 acre parcel zoned RE5, which stands for residential estate five acre minimum, and A10, which stands for general agriculture 10 acre minimum under, under title 17 of the Tuolumne County ordinance code. The project site's located at 8555 Dante Drive, which is approximately um, 3,050 feet west of the intersection of French Flat Road and Rawhide Road within Supervisor District 5. And the general plan designation is RR, which stands for Rural Residential. This is a depiction of the project site. Um, as you can see, um, just some indicators. We have French Flat Road here and Dante Drive, which is the access road to the site. The site is primarily surrounded by general plan designations of rural residential, uh, public, and some agriculture.
for the design of the tower. The tower is 110 feet tall with uh, up to 12 antennas, 19 remote radio units, and one outdoor equipment cabinet, and could potentially accommodate up to three wireless carriers. The tower will be designed as a monopine tree to help blend with its surroundings. And additionally, the tower is conditioned to require earth tone slates to be installed in the chain link fence to screen the compound. This is one of the uh, simulations, photo simulations that AT&T prepared. This is from standing on Rawhide Road. And this is one directly in the Bedros driveway. Um, they are the owners of the project site and the closest pro proximity to the tower. The joiner notices were sent to neighbors within a thousand feet of the project site. And prior to our first planning commission meeting, we received three responses. Since the October 4th meeting, we have received 20 letters, 15 in opposition, two in favor, and three neutral. Uh, we've listed here some of the concerns that we received. The first concern um, was concerns regarding health and safety. Section 17.530.050 of the Tuolumne County Ordinance Code requires that we receive verification that the tower complies with the radio frequency radiation exposure limits of the Federal Communications Commission, also known as the FCC. A radio frequency emissions compliance report was, repaired by, was prepared by Waterford Consultants for the proposed tower and the proposed, uh, sorry, the report states that the proposed site will be compliant with the radio frequency radiation exposure limits set by the FCC. Another, no, another concern we got was regarding decreased property value. Uh, Section 15064E of the, of the California Environmental Quality Act states that economic and social changes resulting from a project shall not, shall not be treated as significant effects to the environment and concerns expressed over the potential uh, devaluation of property value are considered, are considered social and economic impacts and not addressed by the Community Resources Agency. We had some concerns regarding, regarding the land use the proposed project is located on a site zoned RE5 and A10, and pursuant to section 1753040 of the Tuolumne County Ordinance Code, wireless towers are allowed as a conditional use on both RE5 and A10 zone properties, and we are reviewing the conditional use permit today. We received several, several letters uh, regarding concerns about the aesthetics of the, pro of the tower. The proposed tower will be designed as a monopine tree, and additionally, the site is surrounded by ponderosa trees and other vegetation, which will help conceal the tower. Additionally, the project is conditioned to install earth tone slats and a chain link fence to screen the equipment. We received some comments regarding the violation of the covenants, conditions, and restrictions of the subdivision also known as the CCNRs. Tuolumne County does not enforce nor have the jurisdiction to enforce CCNRs, so we did not evaluate that. We also received comments regarding the access and road maintenance. The applicant is a commercial entity and Dante Drive is dedicated to the public, but not county maintained. If the CCNRs have further restrictions, they're outside the enforcement purview of the county. And lastly, uh, we did receive some complaints regarding uh, lack of consistency with the general plan with goals 10B and 10F. Goal 10B states that the county shall promote the improvement of in infrastructure such as water and sewer lines, roads, power, railroads and airports, and communication facilities throughout the county to increase marketability of the county for the retention, expansion, and attraction of business and industry. And staff has, proposed, has determined that the proposed project is consistent with, with Goal 10B. Goal 10F states 
that the county shall encourage retention and expansion of existing businesses and industry and assist in entrepreneurial programs to generate local employment opportunities to reduce leakage of the county trade area and diversify the local economy while maintaining its environmental and cultural integrity. The proposed tower will be used to bring high-speed internet to the area and um, increasing telecommunication services in the county will support goal 10F. Your Tuolumne County Planning Commission may either approve the project with the proposed condi conditions that we have listed, approve the project with your own modifications, or deny the project. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, do you want to start with any questions for staff? Yes. You said you received 15 in opposition. Uh, could you summarize or do you have a listing of how many in, on each of those different topics were there? In other words, were there 15 different topics or did they all summarize within what you listed as being issues? Sorry, one moment. Sure. I pride myself on asking questions that you guys aren't ready for. <laughs> you can take a guess. Yeah. Why you're looking at that? Mm -hmm. What role do we play on here? Are we the deciding body or are we recommending body at this one? Uh, the, the project is before you for um, approval, denial, or um, approval with modifications. So, so you are the approving a, body. This is not a, a supervisor thing that we're making recommendations to. We are the, we are the deciding body. You are the deciding body. And if um, the, uh, an appeal was filed um, within 10 days, then it would be uh, go to the Board of Supervisors for their review. Thank you. I apologize. I don't have the exact numbers, but from my memory, um, a lot of the concerns were regarding the health and safety. That was primarily from the Sierra Waldorf School and a few neighbors. Okay. Um, the decreased property value, that was only one person's input. Uh, land use also was one person's input. Um, pretty much all the uh, received adjoiner notices that we got were regarding aesthetics, or at least had aesthetics mentioned. Okay. Um, and then the violation of the CCNRs, that was within the appeal that we got. Yeah. Um, Access and road maintenance was also within the appeal, and the general plan consistency was also in the appeal. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mr. Sure. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Um, I just want to follow up with the, the reasons why we're here. Um, Commissioner Baker had mentioned something, and the reason why we're here tonight is we had a noticing error. That's why this item is back before the commission, again, as you've mentioned before, to procedurally go through this properly. It is going to be the same process. Um, you are the final body for hearing of this for approval or denial, unless further action is taken, as Quincy had mentioned before, an appeal. So we are here because of a procedural issue that we're correcting. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the moment? No question, but Daniel, you did a dynamite job on your preparation. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. Okay, uh, with that, I will open up the public portion of the agenda item. Um, and first, we will start with those who want to speak in favor. Uh, then we will move on to those who want to speak in opposition. Uh, lastly, we'll speak for those who want to speak neutrally on the project. And if we do have uh, those who want to speak in favor and in opposition, we can do rebuttals. Uh, and you can only speak as a rebuttal and those that were spoken in favor or opposition, correct? And then we can go as a rebuttal if we need it. Uh, I can explain it again when we get closer down to the line if we need it. Uh, but first, we'll uh, start with those who want to speak in favor and come on up. And as a Brown Act, you do not have to introduce yourself, but you're more than welcome to. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, it may not be appropriate, but I'm wondering about it. time limits. Sometimes you, if we're going to set them, they got to be set right. right up front. Do you think we should set them today, David? Yeah, I think we might. Uh, you may want to yeah. uh, ask for a show of hands, and then you as a chair can make the decision whether you want to okay. make an adjustment. How many uh, in the audience are speak or are thinking about speaking in favor or opposition? Mm. Yeah, it looks like there's enough. So it, who would, Quincy, is that you who would manage the timing clock, or is that... Or just on your phone, perfect. So it's uh, three minutes uh, for each speaker. 
uh, Quincy will hopefully give you flag you down on maybe a 30 second warning and uh, other than that we'll try to be pretty firm on that so we'll start there and so come on up <laughs> Good evening. My name is Stephanie Dowdle. I'm with Epic Wireless. We're representing AT&T today. Uh, AT&T is proposing a wireless facility at this location for two reasons, as Dan discussed. First, uh, high-speed internet as part of the CAF2 project, which is that FCC project. And second, better cell phone coverage. Uh, this project is part of, the, part of the FCC's Connect America Fund, a federal program which brings high-speed internet to underserved communities. Uh, broadband has gone from being a luxury item to a necessity for full participation in our economy and in society. As far as the wireless portion <coughs> goes, uh, from 2007 to 2014, uh, AT&T saw a 100,000% increase in mobile data traffic on its network, um, and we expect that growth to continue. In total, national mobile data traffic is estimated to increase another six-fold from 2015 to 2020. So these aren't going away anytime soon. Um, furthermore, wireless coverage is absolutely imperative in emergency situations, as we've seen with recent events. Um, not only are the cell phones necessary for calling emergency services, but government services can also send alerts to cell phones. So they've proven incredibly useful, uh, particularly in California recently. Wireless coverage is absolutely a necessity um, in today's world. For that reason, we're requesting approval on this project. This 110-foot tall monopole will provide greater coverage and expanded capacity to the Jamestown area. Uh, beyond that, I know you guys have seen me here before. Um, the property owners talked to members of their community and actually gathered 27 letters in support of this project, uh, which I have here. Um, unfortunately, I didn't give it to Dan with enough time to put it in his presentation, but he said I could bring copies uh, for you guys, so I do have those. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that we have several people here from AT&T. Um, we have Eric Johnson here who can speak more on the CAF2, so if you've got very specific questions about the wireless internet, I'll bring him up. Um, and we also, uh, I know that health and safety has come up in the past, so I have uh, Raj Mather here, and he can speak to that. He comes from Hamid and Edison, and he can give you a little bit more of his background. So please let me know if you have any questions. Go ahead, Dick. <coughs> yes, um, <coughs> in our agenda packet, uh, there was there was a uh, I guess you'd call it a map of the current coverage, and then the map of the projected future coverage if indeed this tower is built. Yes. Can you tell me, uh, well, well, there was some suggestion in some of the uh, input we got that this was old data. Can you tell me whether that's up to date or Yeah, or this not, is, what? so it's our radio frequency engineers who run these simulations. Um, the first map, which is the one that's primarily blue and white, is showing you, um, is that on your, yeah. okay. So this would be the most recent data that at and has, and it's what we use to kind of figure out, um, just looking on the wireless side of it, where we really need increased coverage. Um, part of the problem we you know, we have with people getting more and more cell phones, using them all the time, is we also need increased capacity because people are using their data, they're using maps, they're texting, they're using you know, the voiceovers. Um, so we definitely need to increase some of the coverage. So if you look at that, that red dot is where the tower is proposed. So it's surrounded by a lot of blue. That blue represents outdoor service for cell phones. The white represents no service. And then if you go to the next one. Uh, here with the addition of the tower, we're looking at increased service both inside, outside, and in transit. Um, and the yellow shows you the in transit service. So we're really closing a gap here. Okay, well, my point was this current current information. Yeah, or as it's current, current as you can make it. Yeah, right. uh, there's additionally yeah. now at the bottom of March 29th, 2017. Right, pretty current. So that's as current as, yeah. One other qu quick question. Uh, now, there, on this uh, poll, there's uh, there are three possibilities for uh, the wireless and the internet and all that, mm -hmm. right? AT&T is taking the top one, which I don't blame them <laughs> involved in. They got the right to it. But there are two others that are further down the, 
the poll. Right. Uh, are those uh, open for other uh, competitors to use? Absolutely. Or so have they been committed yet? Are they still open? Those, as far as I'm aware, those are still open at this time. Um, the way we design our sites, and it's generally either required or preferred by most jurisdictions, is to make them co-locatable. So we put up a site, um, and then we've got available space on the structure uh, for any other competitors or emergency services or whoever wants to go on that. Um, and that includes local internet service providers or? Yeah, I mean, anyone? you know, they just have to approach at and fill out an application and then they'll work with at and directly on that. Okay. Yeah, that's so all I have, thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is not a condominium tower, this is actually owned by at and Yeah, this okay. is at and Any last questions for her? Yeah. Okay. Um, unfortunately not, I don't believe. David, do you want to clarify? So, I would like to clarify what in-building service and what outdoor service means. Right, uh, in-building sure. service, inside call a building, in a house, you can call, no problem. You right. can surf the web, you can do what you need to do on your cell phone. Mm -hmm. uh, outdoor service, you're standing outside. Mm -hmm. um, and then in transit, you're driving in your car. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. David? Mr. Chairman, uh, now that you've had some back and forth as an yeah. opportunity and your time were set, May I suggest that you offer any opponents the same opportunity that you're sure. doing with uh, the applicants? That okay. we make sure that we are clean. The best way to do it is to have people speak and then ask the questions afterwards. But if you want to run okay. it that way, it's fine. Just make sure you, you allow the same opportunity in both ways. Correct. I was going to say after she left the stand that uh, after she does her three minutes, the commissions are commissioners are allowed to ask some questions, and that might uh, go over the time. So I will leave that open as well. Is that it, Commissioners? Any last questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. Next person who'd like to speak in favor. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm a consultant with AT&T. I was formerly the Director of External Affairs for AT&T in Central California. I live in Clovis, uh, not too far down the road. And I'm familiar with the area here, uh, actually worked in the area for several years. Uh, I'm here to provide some background regarding the Connect America Fund and the purpose that we're here for this particular site. First of all, I appreciate staff's um, presentation. I also appreciate the comment that this has already been approved by the Planning Commission and is back because of a, a posting error, uh, nothing that's a flaw with the application. The background on this is that the Federal Communications Commission looked at its Universal Service Fund, something that's gathered nationally. Universal Service Fund was originally intended to expand voice service, telephone service, widely. That's been accomplished, accomplished nationally, so the move then was to say, with the advent of the Internet and the value of the Internet, how does that get expanded widely? So what they did was uh, converted the Universal Service Fund into the Connect America Fund, focusing on bringing f what's called fixed access internet, not satellite out of the air, but fixed access to rural areas. This Connect America Fund will serve about 23 million Americans uh, with 10 megabit speeds download, one megabit upload, pretty good speeds. Uh, and we'll do it focused, like I say, on rural areas. It's basically a modern day version of the Rural Electrific Electrification Act of the 1900s. That's what it's about. That's why we're here. The criteria for a location <clears throat> is determined by the FCC, which looked at all the census blocks in the US and looked for those census blocks that lacked access to this 10 megabit down, one megabit up service. The Heavenly Hills site serves one of those census blocks. So the particular location is determined by the FCC. That's where these are going. This is not something where AT&T is picking it out of the air. They're designated census blocks. In addition, the actual location of the antenna itself is determined by radio frequency engineers who take a look at the census blocks and then determine the antenna site based on how to best serve the households in that census block. So uh, it's very systematic how it's done. You have about 20 seconds if you want to wrap it up. Okay. Um, I appreciate the uh, 
Commission's previous approval of the site, obviously looking for it again. It's for uh, multiple reasons. It brings access to educational services, financial, economic development, which, which supports the county code. Okay, thank you. And in conclusion, I'd like to say thanks very much for having me here tonight. Does anyone have any questions for CAF experts? Sure. Uh, the, yes, sir. The, when you're speaking of the internet connection, that's all through cellular connection, correct? It's not an 802.11 type of a connection involved in this. It's all it's all cellular. It's a G. it's a no. This is a microwave uh, site. Okay. Uh, microwave site that is specific to providing the wireless broadband internet. In addition to what Stephanie had mentioned before, we provide what we call a twofer, which is any place we're putting one of these wireless internet sites. At the same time, we will go ahead and put a cellular service okay. antenna on it which is important, and I'm glad you asked the question because that also improves cell coverage in the area for residents, businesses, and most importantly, probably public safety in the area. So this is a two for deal by placing this antenna. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak in favor? I'm Bob Veldhuizen. I, I live on Rawhide Road about 400 feet north of Waldorf School. Okay, I have a west-facing window, and I look out on the landscape where this thing is proposed, and I think you'd be very hard-pressed to recognize the antenna due to the, what the landscape is like out there. Okay, The other thing that kind of bothers me, and I see in the paper that Waldorf School is very concerned about health reasons, and I, I don't know anything about microwaves, dishes, or anything else, but I, I have to, you know, go with what the consultants say, that it, it's safe, it's within the parameters. What bothers me is that Rawhide Road has a very high tension electrical wires that are directly across the road from the school. Every pole has six wires on it. And that system is designed, as I understand, to cover the whole North County. So there's a lot of power going through those lines and yet they're concerned about the, the, the uh, antenna we're putting up over here, I, I don't make any sense to me. But, so, anyway, that's it. Thank you, sir. Anyone else who would like to speak in favor? We're going to only speak in favor for right now. And you can hold your question for, uh, if you want to sp speak in opposition. You're in favor? Yeah. Perfect. Could you put up the, the uh, last picture that was on there, please? Uh, my name is Marvin Danielson. And I live on Rawhide Road, which is uh, down the down Rawhide Road the other way. Um, I'm for anything that will get better internet service, cell service, television service, anything in that area because it is a pretty blank area. And uh, the service in building, uh, up building, uh, that one, that one. Um, and uh, uh, so, so all um, anything that can be done to get service out there, I I I am for. I am a little at quandary, uh, and let me clarify first. I'm not a, a fan of AT and T, uh, pretty much because I've had my ups and downs with them, and and there's always seemed to have been more downs than ups. But this. Uh, that's where I live. It's in a blue zone there, outdoor. Uh, right now, that's our cell phone service is uh, outdoor, walk to the end of the driveway to the street and maybe get one bar. And there's four bars on the telephone. So <coughs> service is very, very spotty out there. But it doesn't look like this is going to do us any good at all. So. Um, um, I have a question for AT&T and uh, people putting this in is how did they get the census Talking to the mic so we can all How hear did you. they get the census that uh, that is a good location for it when there there's a lot of houses in Tuttletown along 49 Mormon Creek Rawhide Road that area the lake itself the campgrounds at the lake and um, you know why why that area? Why not something over here that's going to get a blank area? There? I'm sure that's doing in part because of the actual census block that they get information mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. uh, from the California.
a calf foam. So I so, don't know if that's technically AT&T. We can ask <coughs> them a little bit later for you, but right. that's... Right. So since this is federal money and it's for rural and we are rural, um, I'm, I'm for that, but I would also like to see further development there that will then increase the for the other rural customers because there there's many houses down there and many people and uh, uh, landlines are disappearing cell phone is growing more and um, the internet is is growing more and more and more so uh, being a rural citizen I like the idea of the towers but I wish it uh, benefited me a little more than that so sure thank you very as much as well as hundreds of other people yeah. there thank you appreciate it for your comment uh, any more want to speak in favor Hello, my name is Laura, and I live off Williamson Road, that's off Dante Road, and at this point in time, we have no cell phone service, no internet, and it's kind of a big concern when you have to get in your car to use your phone. So, and as far as when you had the picture up there of what the tower is going to look like, that's probably the prettiest tree in the whole neighborhood. <laughs> so, I don't think that should be a concern, but I do think it should be a concern that there's, there's no internet or there's no cell phone service where I live. And I've lived there for 25 years. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, good evening. My name is Raj Mathur. I'm with Hammett and Edison. We are an independent consulting engineering firm located in Sonoma, and I am a licensed professional electrical engineer in the state of California. Uh, our job as engineers is to evaluate sites like these for radio frequency exposure or RF exposure compliance with the FCC standard. Uh, we've reviewed the uh, Waterford report uh, that evaluates the radio frequency exposure, and we agree with its conclusion that the site will comply with the FCC limits. Uh, the maximum calculated RF exposure level anywhere aground or at any of the nearby homes uh, is less than 1.4% of the FCC limit. What that means is that the levels are about 70 times below the FCC limit. Uh, there are two main reasons why the levels are so low. Um, the first is that the antennas are directional. Uh, what that means is that the energy they emit is not equal in all directions. The energy is focused in a narrow beam going out towards the horizon 100 feet above ground level, so well above where most of the homes are. Uh, the second reason is that the energy from the antennas uh, diminishes with the square of the distance. What that means is that when you go twice as far away from the antenna, the energy falls by the square of two, which is four times. If you go 10 times as far from the antenna, the energy falls by the square of 10, which is 100 times. So the energy is dropping exponentially with distance. And I'm happy to answer any other questions you may have on the antennas or the technology or RF exposure levels. Any other questions? No. Just a comment. I, I really appreciate that because that was a question I had in reading all this is the, the impact of distance on, on the problem of whatever the health <laughs> problems are. There's a lot of stuff in there about health problems, but very little of it is related to distance. Mm -hmm. But I remember somewhere in physics or someplace where <laughs> there is a, the square root of the square root or something that reduces it as you, as you go further out. So I, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. You're, uh, you did not end up having anything to do with the, the signal level analysis here, just, just on the, the health and safety part of it. That's correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering the same thing. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Nope. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Amanda Monchamp, and I am an attorney for AT&T. I submitted a letter to you guys last night, which you may have gotten, but just in case I, I realize it came in sort of late. Um, it tried to address all the issues that have been raised. Only two of them are really legal. One is the CCNRs. I agree with Dan and the staff report that it is really beyond your purview, but the CCNRs do allow for the declarant to allow this use. Um, and the other sort of legal issue is whether economic property value impacts are something that's also within your purview. And 
whether it is or isn't, um, there's no evidence that's put, been put forward here that it would have a negative effect on property values. In fact, the whole purpose of the CAF program is to improve service. As you've heard some testimony already tonight, there are many people who want that, to not have to go to the end of their driveway to get service. Um, and so this will perhaps, in fact, improve um, property values. So, And lastly, thank you for being here tonight. I serve on my local planning commission and doing it the week before holidays, not the best way, not how everybody wants to spend their evening. So thank you for being here. Any questions? No? OK. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any more who would like to speak in favor? Good evening. I'm Bruce Beaudreau, the owner of the property in question. Um, I just want to say thanks. I'm sorry we all have to be here again. Um, it's important for me to let you know that I didn't solicit for this tower. I was approached um, by AT&T, and after thinking about it and speaking with them, I agreed. It, it's a need, especially in that end of the county. Um, and I told them basically, I don't know what kind of hurdles we're going to go through, but if this is something that's doable, um, I'm on board. Um, I do live up kind of on the hill, and I do have cell service there, but when the wind blows from the north, I have no service. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people that live down below in the Tuttletown area. Um, they'll benefit from this, um, as well as out on Maloney's Lake, in the recreation area, emergency services. You know, there's a lot of factors. Um, but I'm not here in any means to cause problems for anyone. I just see it as being something that would be beneficial down the road for a lot of people. Okay, okay. that's all I've got. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Beth Bodro, also the owner of the property of the proposed AT&T site. I, I wrote my information down. It's easier for me that way. Um, of the neighbors we've had the opportunity to speak with, the single most mentioned issue by residents of Williamson Road, French Flat Road, and Dante Drive is safety. To be able to access wireless and internet without having to go outside, to have wireless and cell available to people on the lake for emergency purposes, and most important, to be able to have that access when our power, power goes out, taking out landlines in households who only have landlines due to no available internet or wireless services at affordable rates. I recently read an article in a local paper describing AT&T as an out-of-town big box provider. Residents of Tuolumne County have been writing their monthly checks to AT&T since 1984 for their phones and other services, far longer than local owned providers have been in business. Currently our home is in a high-speed internet monopoly, controlled by HughesNet, with only high-speed dial-up available at this time from AT&T as an alternative. Conifer is unable to reach our house without us adding an additional structure to our roof line with a dish on top of it in order to catch the signal from their nearest tower. This action would compromise our roof's structural integrity and would not be warranted by Conifer. During our six years of residence, we've never received any advertisements for the locally owned cell and wireless providers promoting available coverages for our neighborhood. AT&T's investigation into a cell tower closer into our region would greatly improve on a dead zone, spreading in-building coverage over a good distance to be of real value to almost all of our immediate neighborhood. The tower aesthetics has been addressed already in proposing the tree-like structure. Um, there will not be a light on top of the tower as it is not within range of the Columbia Airport space. And the base of the compound will not be visible to any household surrounding our parcel. I did a walkthrough on our property and I took pictures of the site, which I brought specifically for anybody who would, who, uh, Mr. Schmidt in particular, if he's here today, I do have those photos I'd like to show to you. Um, it shows that the proposed site is downhill from the crest of the hill. And as I walk towards the Schmidt's property, I take a, a trip over the crest of the hill to the downhill site. So there is absolutely no visibility of the compound by any other household. If a house is built on the west empty lot, their house will be much farther west and I, I don't think they would see the base of the compound either at any time in the future. CCNRs, which although are not governed by this board, I did want to point out two things. Um, in, in our CCNRs, in paragraph four, section three, paragraph A, it allows for sub lessees to access all lots on the road. In the next paragraph, B, 
there, it states that there is a common road fund and that is false. We have been in residence for six years and we have never paid any fees for road maintenance. But Thank we you. do maintain the road. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Questions? Any more who would like to speak in favor? Uh, before we move on, is there any commissioners that wanted to read uh, the Epic Wireless approval or the petitions she got that are signatures that saying those are in favor? I, I was personally would be interested in seeing the names that you did get, so I will take one. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Sure. If you can please bring them up, thank you. Can we also leave one available for staff to also let the public see as well? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It might be short one then, sorry. That's all right, we can share. Mm Okay. <laughs> All right, with that. She's taking copies of the other. Okay. Characters. Great. And with that, we'll move on to those who would like to speak uh, in opposition. And we'll open that up. Thank you, David. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. My name is Arthur Schmidt. And I'm the closest resident to this project. Um, I have a couple of questions about the map here. Um, this is, in your minds, this is basically cell service. Is that what you're looking at? Is this is what would be coverage for cell service or like no, in-house service? It's all of it. It says in-building versus in-transit right, versus but outdoor. My my property is the closest property, and I have in in-house cell service. I don't see no green dot where I live. Interesting. It should be there, right? Sure. sure. I don't know. So this is not an accurate map in that case because I'm the closest house. Do you know who your who's your carrier? AT and T. Can you point where your your house is on? Did um, you bring that actually, up? Actually, bring up it's this on map. The map too. Right it has here. his name on there. Well, oh, no, look at this one. Right, right there. Um, no, on the green map. On the on the on the. Oh, on the, uh, the well, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be hard to see that. Sorry. On the uh, uh, proposed LTT coverage. No, the, if you, I'm talking about before the proposal. Right. It's this map, uh -huh. correct? This one, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I have cell service in my house. There's no green on there. So where is your house? Um. Well, if you overlaid the two maps, is this where the tower is supposed to be? The red yes. dot. Yes. Right. So it'd be. They say a thousand feet, but when I counted it, it was. Um, roughly 600 feet from that dot to which from direction? my house to the tower which direction that would be um what south like right southwest or south that looks like where he is on mm -hmm. this map okay. okay um so so there's there's I don't, I don't understand why there's no there should be a lot of green because i can go all the way from rawhide road up to my house and never lose cell service and i have at&t I also have friends that live down in the hole by the lake, and I know Verizon cell service works down there, so any of those people that live down there, you might look at Verizon um, because their cell service does work. Also, you know, I, the, the biggest complaint I have about the project is to change the zoning, it requires the land maintenance package for the landscaping and there's no landscape no landscaping plan for the project and I don't want to have to look at this um, 40 by 45 foot encaged thing from my property uh, I know the landowner says that I won't have to but if you go out there and stand on the site there's not no 50 to 60 foot variance in in the land from my land to where the tower is going to be being it's only 200 and some odd feet from my property line 
and my property line to my house is pretty flat okay. so thank you sir um has it been three yeah that's about okay appreciate it thank, thank you. you any more who'd like to speak in opposition can i ask you a favor to hold your questions until <laughs> yes. after the three minutes because i think sure. you got short changed there a little bit yeah. but uh i'm raul vaughn so i'm the next property owner over from this property and um, I filed that appeal from the commission's original ruling. So for the sake of time, I'd like to focus on four areas where this project does not comply with the wireless communication facilities section of the Tuolumne County Ordinance Code, Chapter 17.53. And so these are those four areas. Number one, and, and I'll continue if I have more time. So number one, applicants do not have legal access to the property as required by TCOC 17.53.02.C. And that's for two reasons. One, Dante Drive is a private road. It goes directly through my property. The property owners have an easement to use that for residential purposes only. They do not have an easement for non-residential purposes. So that's something they agreed to. The other thing they agreed to is when they signed their CCNRs, the lawyer who said that uh, it was allowed is, that is not correct. Before I brought my property, I took the CCNRs to a local real estate uh, attorney and I asked them what I could and could not do. And this type of project is specifically pro prohibited by the CCRs. Now, granted, that's outside your, your area of, uh, you know, oversight, but I don't understand why that is. But I want to know whether the easement is covered by, you know, your your oversight or not. So two areas, the, the property owners have agreed to their CCRs when they purchase their property. But this project, now they're, they're just violating it. And my only recourse is to sue, you know, AT&T and their army of lawyers if I don't want this. So you guys would be throwing this all on me and just punting it down the road to me to, to take care of. So... Number two, the facilities do not blend in with existing built facilities to reduce visual impacts as required by TCOC 17.53.120. I can see where that compound is going to be. I'm not talking about the tree antenna. I'm talking about the compound itself. And so your own ordinance code requires it to, to fit in with any existing buildings in the area, but it fits in with no existing buildings. I would challenge anyone to show me a building that looks like this compound anywhere in the area. It doesn't exist. So I, I will be able to see this from my property. Um, so please just enforce your own ordinance code if, if, you, if you can. Uh, number three, the applicants have not conducted a thorough analysis of, of the possible existing co-location facilities to reduce impacts as required by TCOC 17.53.210. In other words, that coverage map as Mr. Schmidt said, does not accurately depict actual existing high-speed data. So I can go through that whole area and, and find where it does and where it doesn't. The, the map is not accurate. All right, thank you very and much. And finally, as Mr. Schmidt said, they didn't provide a landscaping plan okay. as required by TCOC 17.53.005B12. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any others who would like to speak in opposition? Don't start it. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get back up on the mic, also let everyone know what you passed out. Thank you. My name is David Harris with Conifer Communications. Uh, we're opposed to the tower primarily, and I don't want to read this, what my staff has put together, but if you look down there, very little attention has been placed on the fixed wireless, uh, mostly was cellular. Um, under the Connect America Fund, 
This is supposed to be put into unserved or underserved areas. We provided several pictures. The second one is our coverage of the area. We covered very well. And that's only from one tower, Fowler. We're not even talking about the coverage we have from West Sonora or from Sonora Peak or from Telegraph. So I would ask you not to approve the fixed wireless component of that because we are serving it and they're going to interfere with our signal. We're using the same signals. As to the use of monopoles and co-locating, the uh, WISP wireless service in, uh, providers do not use monopoles because we use climbers. To use a monopole means you're going to use a, in this case, it's going to be a 125 foot uh, man lift. A 95 foot man lift will cost you a thousand bucks to get moved in, used for the day and back out. We'll climb it and be done with it. We can't afford to use uh, cherry pickers to get up there. Now, I know it's partially uh, security for AT&T, but it's also, or Verizon, but it's also to keep small wireless companies from, from co-locating. As to AT&T being agreeable to co-locate, I've seen totally empty lattice towers of AT&Ts, and we've tried to get on them and been told they're fully occupied. And that's the honest to gosh truth. And I can name you the exact location and the exact towers. So I would encourage you to at least limit the fixed wireless part of it because they're using public funds, almost a half a billion <coughs> dollars of public funds to go into these areas. And uh, the FCC has sort of uh, uh, kicked the ball down the road to the CPUC, which has kicked the ball down to the planning commissions. And you're supposed to sit in judgment on this without the data and the information. And I'm sorry, that's wrong. They're, the ones that are providing the funds should be providing the exact data. And as to uh, when the FCC declared this an unserved area, I'd like to hear what date was on that. Um, the second diagram there from us is today, or yesterday, excuse me. And we had people out there yesterday and saying that we can serve the property owners very, very well. I don't know when they called us, but it wasn't in the last two and a half years. Thank you. Appreciate it. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you've lost me. Well, tell us what, the, what this means. <laughs> well, those, are, those are programs showing coverage. Um, that one. Is that your coverage? Or? That would be the, co the coverage from the AT&T Tower. At that at that height, if we're looking at fixed wireless, I, I I we don't have the ability to 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 demonstrate to you what their cellular coverage would be, but that would be their fixed wireless using the same equipment we use, using the same frequencies. Well, well you indicated that you already served that area. Yes, sir. The second page in there, the green page, uh, clearly shows we serve the area very well, and that's just from one tower. What do you like, mean by serve? What are you serving to that community? Well, if you look at the green area, that would mean that we should be able to offer service to somebody in that area. Are we talking about this page? Non yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Baker. Just, just it, internet service or cellular service? As well? We only provide internet. Internet. Yeah. Okay. Not cellular. Okay. So, Oops. I mean, I'd like to get a little more clarity. So the, the, the density of the green here, is that, you know, what, how do I read this chart? Yeah. The, 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 the more intense green would, would say that we're lighting it up to a, like a NAG 65, which is really good. The less would be like a NAG 70, which is more than adequate, more than adequate. The, the biggest problem we sometimes run into is just a house can be in a little hole. There's no way to getting up. But in this application, uh, we got multiple uh, customers out there. Uh, one of the gentlemen that spoke here is, uh, has been a customer out there for a long time. And like I said, this is only from one of our towers. West Sonora, Sonora, and Telegraph are not being depicted on here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Harris, oh, um, yes, do those you serve have some sort of apparatus on the roof? 
Typically, yes, we like to mount on the eave, uh, like to stay off the roof if possible. It's usually a, about a two foot dish. Sometimes it's too, even too hot for that and it has to be like a little foot by foot uh, uh, dish. Approximate weight? Seven pounds, maybe, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. five pounds. Yeah, okay, thanks. I do. You use the word adequate coverage. Can you elaborate on what that means? Uh, I was just trying to be <laughs> adequate coverage. We're, we're, we're painting that area pretty well just with that one tower. And what kind of speeds? Um, you can have 25 megs down if you wish. And you can go online and look at our, our uh, pricing. And we, we stand by our pricing. And through our service, you can, get, uh, you can get your telephones. And through our service, you can get your entertainment, okay. you know, Netflix, Hulu. NBC, CBS, DirecTV, now stream. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Hello. Merry Christmas. I'm Ben Hewlett, for, uh, the owner of Mother Load Internet. We've been a local provider here for about over 23 years. We're kind of proud of the fact that uh, we're kind of the, one of the pioneers of bringing technology to this area. And we've done it as an independent business. And I hope that we live in a community that supports independent business. And really that's what's, I think, on the table right now, is you have a proposal for a tower in front of you that uses public money that interferes with public business, with in, <laughs> interferes with private business. Um, my colleague here, Conifer, has good coverage. We also have good coverage. We've invested our private funds to create that, as well as Verizon has coverage there with private funds. Uh, we've done a drive-through through the area, and the coverage of AT&T itself, the very vendor claiming that they need to inc increase coverage, the coverage is there, three bars on phones throughout the area. So. What I would like this Planning Commission to do is express its support for local business to support its local community. And we will build the towers without public money. They can go build this tower in another area that doesn't have aggressive, very interested local vendors that are willing to do it with local employees and local money. Um, that's a, my primary point. Question. Yep. Go ahead. <coughs> oh, Ben, hold on. Uh, just a few minutes ago, you suggested that you could build a tower. Tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we um, uh, we build towers, and there's also a concept called neighborhood na networks, where we can uh, we can broadcast signal into a specific location. There's many little rises where. There's homes or structures available where we could put just a simple little tower that's maybe 10 foot on top of uh, either an existing structure or an existing bluff or something like that. As long as we have power, we can rebroadcast to the neighbors in the area. This is not a very dense area, and a neighborhood network is very viable for expanding coverage. And uh, like uh, my colleague uh, David Harris was saying, once you have bandwidth, you have the ability to communicate with a phone over Wi-Fi calling, and you have the ability to uh, get all of your entertainment as well as your data. So um, generally the coverage that we have in the area is around six megabits down, two megabits up. That's enough for about three streams, simultaneous streams of YouTube or Netflix, and plenty of uh, bandwidth for um, voice over IP or any other tech, you know, uh, uh, technological use of, uh, of, of broadband. So yes. We just need to be encouraged to use our own funding and not have to compete with our own tax dollars and USF funds that has really came out of our phone bills to fund. And unfortunately, those funds are not available to us independent ISPs. Only certain big ISPs have access to that. That's so let's stand on our own two feet as a community and support Mike, our own businesses. I had another question in that regard. Are you prohibited for bidding on those funds that are involved in this tower? 
Are you prohibited uh, from that? Unfortunately, the qualifications required for CAF 2, we don't qualify for. And that's something that we have been fighting with the FCC for a long time, but it's just the state of affairs right now. So consequently, we get out our own checkbooks. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. David, did you have something to say? No? Okay. Any others who'd like to speak in opposition? Okay. First, I will open it up the, to those who'd like to speak neutrally before we go on to rebuttals. Looked like you were ready to go. You saw me taking this. Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate having a large crowd. I'm not here by myself. That's very <laughs> nice. But it's very important to understand when you come before a planning commission what the planning commission's role is and what your role is as the audience. So this is an application for a particular project. And if you're going to come and speak in opposition, you need to speak in opposition to that application and that project and why it doesn't meet the criteria that you are given to work with. So while I appreciate Mr. Hewlett's comments, this is not the place to express support for local business and encourage you to compete. They can't sit up here and decide which businesses are going to succeed and which ones aren't. That would be going to the Board of Supervisors and asking for support for local business. So while I appreciate those comments, they're inappropriate. And then there were many opportunities, I would think, if you wish to provide coverage that you could have filled out an application to. So I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't have a cell phone. I'm evidently going to have to get there at some point. <laughs> but, and to the other gentleman that talked about not, no coverage in his little area, there are so many more cell phone tower projects coming forward. And I remember the one that wasn't recommended by staff on the service master property, so I don't know if that would have covered the backside of this. And that one's going to come back. Yeah, I don't know when that's coming back. But I know there are other towers proposed. So... I think we need a little more public education or outreach or something that when these towers come forth, like you did a really great job on this report. I really <laughs> liked this. That, that was good. But people need to know, I think, the big picture and what their role is in commenting on this. Thank you. Thank you. David, that leads me just a question for you real quick. And we, David, thank you. We kind of like the CCNR, my assumption is we probably can't even consider if public funds are being used or not. Um, it would be my strong recommendation to you to stick in the purview that is, is <coughs> was mentioned to you before. It's land use. Yeah, right. It's applicable to the codes. Okay. Um, I, I try to make sure that you guys are, are steered in the correct direction, but also allow you the, the purview of being a community citizen. Yeah. But if you consider things that aren't uh, within your rights to consider to make a decision, um, um, that's a very dangerous slope. Right. Okay, thank you. So we'll now move on to rebuttal. Uh, only those who actually spoke in favor can re uh, talk in rebuttal, and you can only speak on what was talked in opposition. Does that make more sense now? I think I said that right. <laughs> so first we'll, we'll open it up to rebuttal. Any rebuttal? Those who spoke in favor and want to rebuttal. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like we got two. I think you spoke in uh, opposition, correct? Yes. Oh, you're moving up so forward. I left my documentation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, are you going to limit the time for this? Yes, as well? and we're still limited to three minutes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephanie again. I'm with Epic. Um, I really appreciate everybody who came out here. It's important that we hear uh, from the community, especially on these issues, um, especially if you want more coverage. It is nice to hear. Um, as far as some of the issues that came up, um, I know we had one person mention that they do get coverage in their house themselves. Um, that might be true in you know one particular place, but as you've heard from many others, it's not true for the general vicinity. Um, also, we're looking at um, LTE 700 coverage, so we're going up in technology. We're not looking at 3G or any of those, um, and this covers you know the whole gamut of cell phone technology. Um, as far as concerns about blending in, we did work with planning um, 
and we did look at different options. We had originally proposed a uh, different kind of design, but we ultimately decided on the tree design because uh, it does blend and it looks nice. Um, and we're also doing things like slats. So it's, you're not going to be seeing just equipment sitting out there. This is all fenced in. Um, you're not going to see the generator. You're not going to see the shed. You're going to be se seeing fencing with slats in it. Um, we chose this particular site because of the terrain, because of the area. I mean, location is super important uh, anytime we're looking at a wireless facility like this. Co-locating was not an option simply because there weren't any nearby uh, facilities on which to co-locate. We do co-locate when we can. Uh, that just wasn't the case here. There's nothing around here. Um, as far as some of the concerns coming from the other internet providers, we're not here to hamper their services. We're just providing a service. The FCC determined that this wasn't a sufficiently covered area. We're coming in here to try to fill in those gaps, to try to cover it with better internet service, with fast internet service. Um, you know, we're not trying to step on any toes in that regard. Uh, so please let me know if you have any questions. Um, is it Stephanie? It is. Stephanie, I, um, I wonder if um, you could speak on um, AT&T's behalf regarding uh, possible landscaping, doing something about uh, the visual situation for the property owners that will be affected. I, I myself wouldn't want to be looking at a slatted fence. Um, I, I guess what I'd like to hear is that AT&T is open to discuss this issue with the property owners that are affected and remedy something so that we'd have two happy folks. <laughs> right. We do understand the concern. Um, the re only reason we didn't, you know, in most of our projects, we, you know, we're required to do landscaping if they're visible. In this case, we're in an area that's wild. I mean, it's trees, it's grasses, it's got a tremendous amount of natural foliage. Um, it just didn't seem appropriate in this. Not to mention, we're on top of a hill, so bringing up the actual water to maintain the landscaping mm -hmm. uh, would be difficult in this case. And that's also why they didn't require it of us. Um, I'm taking that as a no. You would not be open-minded about working with the property owners. I think that, that, would, correct? Be, that would be out of our jurisdiction. That's not, we're, if we're not going to be putting that into our recommendation, then I don't think we should really recommend that. Oh, uh, it's not suggested that we do that. We're never opposed. We're definitely not opposed to working with uh, the neighbors. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank I, you. Had, I had a question. Um, is AT and T expecting to make a profit off of this tower and the operation of the tower? Um, do they typically put in things where they lose money? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, sometimes it's a loss leader. Do they ever put it in and say, "Yeah, we're not going to make any money off of it, but we're we're going to do it just because"? <laughs> um, in this case, you know, the purpose of this tower is for the, uh, the primarily for the FCC. Um, so, you know, as a secondary thing, we are putting on antennas. Will it help AT&T to have better coverage in this area? Absolutely. But it will also help the community. Okay. Thank but you. presumption is, is that you will. Yes. AT&T doesn't typically go around uh, even investing public funds in you know, seven customers. You know, I'm not in a position to speak to that. But okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Another sir rebuttal. Yep. Um, Marvin Danielson again. Um, the positioning of it, I was looking at um, uh, the other map of the fellow there, and they talked about that they uh, position these on a population level. But Looking at his map, uh, which has uh, a good view of the populated areas, and this area here, uh, can they tell us how many people this is going to benefit? And uh, if, if that is overlaid on the other map <laughs> that we have here, I don't see the, the population that th it's going to be covering is really doing a job versus the population that is is still not being covered. I think that's going to be all of our interpretation of the different maps. So I think staff wouldn't have that. They don't have the maps do already have, to overlay it. Do so. you have a population number that, that this is benefiting, the number of people? 
The tower not only just serves existing residents, but also travelers, you know, right. on, so it really would vary. Um, I don't think we have a count of the number of, um, of actual look. residents. When we did the mailing list uh, and we sent the mailing list out, the number of um, adjoining property owners was maybe 15. So within a thousand, 18. So within a thousand feet, there were 18 um, yeah. residents, okay. home, uh, homes within that area. So yeah. I don't know how many folks per. But most of the travelers are going to be going down Rawhide and back and forth on 49. So it seems to me that that is more the area that you want to concentrate on, and that is also the area that has the higher population. Right. Again, so, ask a question. Yeah. I've lost track of what point you were, you were rebutting you're, at this point. You're rebutting, rebutting something now. they so what, said. What point were they making that you're taking exception to? The location of the tower. Well, the, the, there's no question about where the location of the tower is. You're rebutting your yeah, is the, whether or not it's going to do any value, or I don't understand. Um. Well. Yeah. They said that this is based on population mm -hmm. figures. Mm -hmm. Okay, is but I have heard nothing about the population figures. So you have se seventy people there. Now the traveling of it. If you look at the the coverage area there, it doesn't cover the main highways where people are traveling. Okay, thank sure. you. Thank you. So I'll just do one more reminder on rebuttals. We can only talk about what was spoken again in opposition. Um, any more rebuttals? Commissioner Eric. Eric Johnson. A um, couple of items that were brought up. First of all, I appreciate the um, person's comment about the fact that this is about the criteria for the project and we meet the criteria. Uh, the FCC funding for this project is specifically to put in the wireless internet capacity. So the comment that was made earlier about, can, you know, could you do this self-coverage, maybe not without the wireless, this is driven by the FCC, uh, the uh, wireless internet capacity. If there's no internet capacity on the tower, there is no tower. This is not something where we'd put up the cell coverage instead of, it's cell coverage would only go with the wireless internet capacity. To uh, Mr. Gustafson's um, question regarding funding, we don't put up things to lose money. Okay, uh, and specifically, I think this is important. Um, what the FCC is providing these uh, funds, this is a partial subsidy. This is not a complete underwriting of the site. So AT&T is still putting its own money into the site for the wireless internet part and totally on our own for the additional cell coverage. The public uh, money doesn't cover the cell coverage at all. Um, I would like to uh, add that the availability of service question that's come up uh, in the area, I think was spoken to by folks who in this room said, I don't have access, plus the 35 people roughly who have uh, rendered written signatures saying that they support the service, which to me I would interpret as they don't have it now. Thank you. Thank you. Any last rebuttals? <laughs> Bruce Baudreau again. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, it's been about a year and a half ago. Um, we called, my wife and I called Conifer uh, up in Groveland and scheduled an appointment. And they came, came was it this year? Okay. Came up anyway, they came out two young men um, came out and they looked at the site and ultimately we were told that their service wouldn't reach our house because we sat lower in a, in a hole but we could put a tower on our roof eight to ten feet which would give us give them enough elevation um, my wife asked them are you going to warranty the roof uh, if you're going to mount something like that on our roof. No. Mr. So Chairman, <coughs> point of order. I'm not sure this is pertinent to the decision process faced before us. I somewhat agree, um, but we were talking about warrants. David, do you have a comment on that? I just want to make sure that you're following the process. Is it Thank you. They make it a point of what he's rebutting. If he sticks to that, then he is following I, the means. Okay. I agree, yeah. But we just need to clarify, sir. Okay. Well, basically, um, 
conifer couldn't give us service. And they were telling us that it was more, their system had to be a line of sight. Right. Um, okay. Okay, so that would have required something on the home. That seems like a fair comment. Thank you. Thank you. Any last rebuttals? Okay, so now we'll move on to Sir Rebuttal. And you can only speak on what those five people have just said. So there's about five different uh, people that have comments, and those are the only things you can rebut to their rebuttal. <laughs> so any Sir Rebuttals? Remember, it's the last five comments. Two points. I think we really need to clarify the actual coverage, the existing coverage. It seems like it's really not clear on what the actual coverage is. I know the map is not accurate. You guys probably haven't gone out there to, to figure that out. But that map submitted by AT&T is not accurate. So I think we really need to clarify that. The other thing we really need to clarify is how many people, how many households who don't have access to existing high-speed data would be added by this service? Is it 18? Is it 7? The idea that somebody signed a, a petition means that they don't have access is just not true. Somebody could say, I have two bars, I would like three or four bars, but that's not true to say that somebody who signed this petition doesn't have access. Isn't that what this is all about? How many houses are going to be covered by this? Okay. Thank you. I'm still looking for my green dot on that map. Uh, so uh, they're willing to work with a landscaping permit. You guys require a landscaping permit, so I think we really need to put a landscaping permit in there so I don't have to look at the fence and the reminding that the fence is only six foot tall and the building's 20 foot tall, I believe, David, is that correct? But anyway, around numbers. So. Uh, the, the plan requires the landscaping. Can we at least follow protocol and make sure we have a landscaping plan and and help me with that? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any last sir, rebuttals? David Harris again. Um, I guess. It depends on which AT&T consultant you're listening to, whether it's a cell tower improving coverage or it's for fixed wireless. And in rebuttal to my presentation, I still didn't hear when the FCC data was provided. Um, and as to the uh, homeowners, uh, I just know that our, our director of uh, network was there yesterday, and he said, we can paint the house really well. And when I say paint, we show good coverage. And I have tech staff, they've looked into it, and uh, we're not seeing anything in the last two years from uh, the name of the homeowner. So I'm a little quandary as to how to answer. I'm not saying they're, they're wrong, but, and our guys would not advise or say we'd put a tower on top of the roof. We would never do that, because we're not going to take the liability of the, of the house, so. Thank you. Well, Okay. Oh. Yep. Um, I just want to emphasize the fact that I think there are some very tangible uh, ordinance issues that have been raised this evening uh, by Mr. Vaughn and so forth. And uh, like the young the lady uh, mentioned earlier, those are the issues you really need to address. Um, and does it follow along with the ordinances of this county? And uh, I take issue with the staff's recommendation that it does, uh, that they claim it does comply with uh, uh, goal number 10F of the economic development uh, element of the general plan. I don't think it supports local business. Um, and so as a local business owner, I take issue with that. Sounds like we can listen to it. Or really it's not part of the order. rebuttal. So you're not you're not responsible for implementing no, the no ordinance one, of the plan. It's no one land rebuttaled use. on that. Pure land use. Yeah. Pure land use. Okay. Well, I just uh, 
support your analysis and looking into the issues that have been drawn up that have brought up tonight on those specific okay. specific codes. Thank you, Ben. All right. Any last rebuttals? Okay. With that, I will close the public comment period. Thank you for all your comments. Um, before we go on to commissioners, David, do you think you can summarize for us of all the comments that were given, some of the things that we personally as commissioners cannot consider? Maybe give us a summary because there was a lot that we were going back and forth on what we can cannot consider. Okay. So Quincy and I are obviously, you see us trying to bounce yes. notes back and forth to each other. We're trying to make sure that you stay on the right path Thank for consideration. You. And I think you've already stated the economic side of things is something that um, is community members you're aware of, but your authority lies in the ordinances right. and the approval bodies, uh, decisions that you have authority. You, there are some landscaping issues that you had that you were wanting to hear about. The coverage areas, the submittals met our requirements. We are not experts. It's for something for you to consider. Um, whether you make a decision based on that or other things, um, you have obviously folks have testified in both directions. That's something you'll have to make the decision on. But um, the planning staff has looked at it. They've met the requirements of what we submitted. Okay. Um, I'll have Quincy go through um, all the, you know, the landscaping ordinance for you if you'd like. She okay. has it open here in the general Please. plan book. Okay. Um, we also, um, I've heard some things about the compliance with uh, the general plan. Um, it's in the staff report. Um, we've made our recommendations that it has met that. That's something for you as the planning commissioners to make that decision upon. Okay. Thank Is there you, anything David. else that you need from us to try to help you? Any last before we? Well, I just want to be clear. You don't rec uh, require a, uh, any uh, issues with, with uh, vegetation or putting anything special in for this because you didn't put it in here as a condition that it has to be done. <coughs> So uh, the ordinance code in uh, 1753170 speaks to um, its the, the section's titled Vegetation Protection and Facility Screening. And um, as we do with a lot of cell towers, um, if the native vegetation provides adequate screening, additional landscaping is not required. And I'll read it to you. It says, um, a landscaping a landscape and maintenance plan shall be submitted with an application for a use permit indicating all existing vegetation identifying landscaping that's to be retained on the site and any additional vegetation that is needed to satisfactory satisfactorily screen the facility from adjacent land uses and public viewing areas watering and ma maintenance and things like that so it's staff in looking at this project didn't feel that there was any additional landscaping that was required which is allowed under uh, the ordinance code their site plan that they submitted does show um, degrees of it, the existing vegetation. Uh, and so that's uh, how we were able to have evidence that it was there as well as with a site visit. Um, I do just want to follow up with something that David said that was mentioned with respect to uh, the Tuolumne County general plan. Consistency with the general plan is a required finding for your approval. Um, but the language that's in the general plan regarding um, regarding support for local businesses isn't necessarily speaking to the the business of cell phone cell towers it, it's speaking broadly to the support of businesses in the county which staff felt that um, improving telecommunications for a variety of types of businesses um, that this project met that um, goal of the general plan okay any questions commissioners yeah, I, I might add one more thing yeah. if the Commissioners feel that um, there may some, be some additional screening. May I suggest you ask staff to work with with native type of landscaping. Um, if you look at the pictures that Dan physically went out and took pictures of the site for you to see for a reason. Um, adding infrastructure to areas and, and it only disturbs more. The native uh, grasses and trees and shrubs, um, what I call buck brush, um, is um, 
very apparent at what's up there. If that is something that the commission wants to do, we may, you may be able to add a condition that they do that, and that would be something that would be um, more in the lines with what the staff is seeing on the site. And I'm not saying it's, you have to do that, just trying to give you an idea. Thank you, David. I, I, that is exactly what my thought was, um, native vegetation that would provide that visual screening. <clears throat> yeah, I got an issue I think is a much bigger than the landscaping issue. That before and after map, I mean, that, was, that told a, a real story if we, when we accepted it as being in the agenda and accepted that it was correct. Now, there have been some suggestions made that it's out of date, it's not accurate, and all these kind of things, which really clouds, clouds the issue. I mean, we really need to know before and after what the effect is if we're going to serve our constituents. And as, as staff, are you satisfied that that's the best information we can have and it's accurate enough to make a decision? Can, can I weigh in on that a little bit? You know, this is, uh, we're looking for a, a, a black and white answer to this. And yeah. it, of course, is a big shade of gray. Because whether you're getting one bar of one X signal, and therefore you have it, or you're downloading a movie on your tele on your on your phone with 4G connections or, or something, is a huge difference in signal level. And and so when you and you know, and it can be as simple as you've got a fireplace in the way, and so you don't have a signal, and the other person doesn't. Yeah, RF is 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 a is a fickle thing to be able to predict, and to be able to predict it with the kind of resolution that people are expecting here just doesn't happen. It's not, it's not in the state of the art. You know, <laughs> Mike made a living out of this for a long time and could speak to it much more eloquently than I could, but the fact is, is that you, you'll never get an exact map until after the tower's up and you're walking around with a signal meter after the tower's up because there's just too many variables in the mm -hmm. process. And what's one person's good enough signal isn't the next person's good enough signal. So it's, you know, it's like, Back in the day of television, you, you, you had a signal, but, would you, but you had great lines going through it, and that wasn't quite good enough, right? Well, you know, that's, that, that's all well and good, but that was where I was going with it, was, is AT&T in the habit of putting up cell towers that don't work or don't, don't service anybody but three jackrabbits? And I think the answer, that was a very facetious question on my part, and I knew it. I, I don't think they do that. And I didn't see anywhere in here where a service map was a condition by which we could approve it or right. disprove it. Right. So I don't think it's relevant. If AT&T wants to squander a half a million dollars building a tower that doesn't service anybody, but it's consistent with land use, I think that's the end of the conversation. Okay. Right. And, if, and I'll honestly say at this point that if it's not required, because we've had this conversation before. We've been through all of this before. And the idea of the vegetation was brought up. They talked about water. They talked about how difficult it would be, how expensive it would be. And it was decided at that time that that was not a condition we wished to put on it. And I'm still not hearing any reason why a condition should be put on it now. With all due respect, respect to everyone, if it's not part of the conditions that the county is saying, county staff, we have to do, I, I'm not going to throw more stuff on top of this okay. thank you mike However, sorry the public comment is closed comes. for now and we're only in talking amongst ourselves well, I'm no I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. sir no i'm sorry sir i appreciate that your comments but we can only uh we're public comment is closed david you have a comment commissioner plan was your question <laughs> answered by your fellow commissioners it sounded like it was <laughs> <laughs> loud and clear is what i heard yeah. Well, humorously, I said, you're no help at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still no That's help. true. <laughs> the it, point's made, there is no such thing as an correct. accurate no. projection, even it, though, God, it's, it's been, a computer we're all over the world with this stuff, and yet we can't seem to really project, I it's guess. A it's a computer simulation. But, but I think one of the real key points when you look at that map, the map says LTE 700. <coughs> There's probably very few places in the county today that get LTE yeah. 700, yeah. right? Yeah, because that's a very high, it's a very high bar as to what's acceptable. This is like having an HD picture on your television as opposed to, to, to you know, rabbit ears. So uh, it, you know, that's, that's a very high bar. If you ask for that same map done with basic 
uh, analog telephone connection or something would be it would be significantly different. So it's it's not you know there'd, there'd have to be a lot of pages to be able to have this analysis be thorough. Okay, I do have one you can really answer though. <laughs> yes. It was somebody suggested there was no public access. Oh yeah. Now that's a public road, a county road. No, no, no. no. no it's a we'll let the staff answer. So we did speak with Duke York and our roads department, and it's a road that is dedicated to the public but privately maintained. It was never accepted into the county road maintenance that. system. So it's a Once public it, road. Yeah, any sort of easement uh, agreements between property owners is a private and a civil matter. So mm -hmm. if if uh, my to get to my house, I have to drive across David's house and he gives me permission to, uh, David's property, he gives me permission to do that, that's an agreement between us that the county is not party to. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve county, uh, the CUP 17005 conditions one through 29. And A through F? Okay, A through F. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Wait a minute. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go down the, the discussion. discussion. Yeah. Discussion. Discussion. What is that, Dick? What do you want to discuss? <laughs> <laughs> Our cell tower out rawhide. <laughs> okay. So we have a second motion. No, I, I just point out. Sure. One thing. Uh, you know, 15 years ago or whatever it is, we all complained like mad because nobody would bring big time cell coverage in Tuolumne County. We were a rural area and we complained because they were putting all their money and all our customers were down in the valley or in the Bay Area and everybody was ignoring Tuolumne, Calaveras, Maripos, what have you. Well, I guess it's changed. For some reason, the FCC has kind of forced a hand and now there is one. So I just give you a little history you know, we, we cried for better cell coverage uh, some years ago, and uh, and now we're getting them, and we have to make up our own minds whether we want them or not. Sure. So that's just a little history. Thank you. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to make a comment. I don't sure. know if it's a discussion or not, but you know, the uh, uh, I do believe that the the local companies that are providing uh, providing service there. Um, yeah, they may not be getting a fair deal with the with what's going on in the in the in the funding of these organizations and who can get into and who can get out of it. Unfortunately, I believe that that's beyond our uh, our authority to deal with. Right? Uh, it's a it's a little higher job code, and and so therefore, you know, I I, I recognize that. I also think that uh, that you know companies you know disclosure. I'm a conifer customer, and they do an excellent job, and I think that they will be able to compete just fine. With the, with the tower here against a, against a company like AT and T because of the, the local service they provide, so I don't think we're shutting off the local uh, the local thing by by approving this. Uh, even though you know, if I were king for a day, I might 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 agree to that, but that's not what we're here for. Okay. Any other discussion? So we have a second, and uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, maybe David, you can just have us go down the line since it sounded like it was pretty quiet for uh, all those in favor. So Heidi, you want to start us off? Aye. 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 Okay. So, uh, unanimous decision. Uh, with that, there's a lot of discussion. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for being civil. Um, and good luck. Thank you. Good night.